Okay, we're back live here at HP Discover in Germany. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE.com and my co-host Dave Vellante and I are here with Biri Singh, uh, SVP and General Manager of HP Cloud Services and Cloud Systems. No, Converge Cloud and Cloud Services. Converge Cloud uh -huh. and Cloud Services. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thanks for having me, John. Great to have you on. You know, we met in Palo Alto for a short briefing. Was, I know you had, you had run all these executive meetings, but you know, the cloud was emerging. You were behind a lot of the OpenStack and the, the cloud project, and since then you've launched the cloud. I forget when we met, it was months ago, and um, HP's got cloud everywhere. They've had cloud system out there, but talk about the cloud offering right now, and let's set the table. Okay. Uh, for the cloud. So cloud is a big global term. It's generic, but it's not generic than HP. It's a little different nuances. So sure. can you so lay out what cloud is with let HP? Let me come at it from, uh, let's talk about HP Converge Cloud, which is really the, uh, so let's, uh, if, you, if you look at it from the standpoint of um, Converge Cloud, what, what we've done there is actually pull together uh, private cloud, our public cloud offering and our managed hosted offering and put that together under the banner of HP Converge Cloud. And, and really what it's dealing with is the idea of hybrid delivery. Right, so we're pulling together a set of solutions under each one of those respective areas that together allow us to offer customers and partners one I, we think one of the most comprehensive solutions for dealing with uh, not just hybrid delivery but also wrappering it with things like a very secure environment, SLAs, um, and the whole thesis is, what's it going to take to get enterprise production workloads onto the cloud, right? So uh, is that the buzz that we were seeing this morning about enterprise grade for consumer cloud prices? There was some, some buzz going around. Was that the converged cloud, was that cloud system? That's part of it. So cloud system is our private cloud offering. Okay. HP public cloud is our public cloud offering. And then our managed cloud business with enterprise services is essentially our ES-led you know, consulting where we essentially stand up clouds for our customers. Got it, okay, got it. Okay. Um, so how's, it, how's, been, how's the reaction, because you guys went into beta, mm -hmm. and now the, the product. Where so we started working on the public cloud uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, we, in the summer of 2011, committed to OpenStack. Uh, put a full weight of HP behind it. It's been fantastic. We're one of the, uh, I think, most significant players in OpenStack, uh, but not just in terms of sort of showing up. We've actually demonstrated and executed and stood up one of the largest uh, public clouds uh, you know, using OpenStack in a fairly tight way. So in the fall of 2011, we went up in private beta. In May 2000 of this year, we stood up our public beta service and we just went GA with compute. So now we have compute, storage, CDN, uh, both block storage, object storage, in, in general availability with an SLA backing it. And, and really why I want to emphasize that is it's our thesis that ultimately to get enterprises off the sort of dev test and just playing around or shadow IT of, of uh, using cloud, you really need a true enterprise grade service quality. And, and standing behind an SLA is really important. So you know, in seven months we went from beta to GA, we think it's the early innings of now being able to go after full-blown you know, production workloads, not just dev test, but dev test to production. Um, and I think it's important, and if you look at what we've executed on relative to the rest of the industry, where other, other players took anywhere from 12 to 22 months to uh, you know, put their service into play, uh, and some haven't even exited beta yet, uh, you know, we think we've made some progress. So uh, we've been busy, but it's been a good busy. You so mentioned what? your commitment to OpenStack, and you sort of said you're really committed to OpenStack. A number of people have joined OpenStack, but it's almost, you get the feeling of, okay, hey, we're in two, we're open. Yeah. You know, so, so here's, so you know, talk the, about that a little bit so in terms the, of that commitment. So HP's got, got a pretty, sure, HP's got a pretty strong tradition in open source, as you know. Uh, we, put, uh, we put, you know, a lot of wood behind OpenStack. The way I think about it, in open source communities, code speaks, right? And you have to be able to look at what each vendor and each member is doing, not even, not just the large companies, but even some of the smaller, and even individual developers and uh, you know, committers and the idea of committing is, is important. So we've aspired to you know, make a difference there. Uh, we're, we're one of the significant sponsors. We leveraged our understanding of sort of how to do foundation work to get stand up the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, so you know, I think we've done some decent work around governance, but quite frankly also leverage what we think is an incredible stack of technology that the community is sort of centered around, and I say community in a broad sense. 
uh, but I think we've leveraged it. We're one of the only vendors that has stood up a public cloud on OpenStack, but also now have a private cloud implementation, and the idea is to bring that together in a hybrid solution. So there's a lot of weight on your shoulders with that, you know, the, the commitment that you're making to OpenStack. Is OpenStack ready for prime time? We think it is. Um, it's like any, any open source project, it's only as good as the ecosystem around it. And uh, if you look at the players, there's some serious players uh, that are sort of geared up. Um, and I think you know, we're going to see we're going to see a lot of activity just in the last three months. Uh, there's been tremendous, tremendous uh, milestones within OpenStack, and uh, we think that's going to continue. It's the credibility, the credibility of OpenStack definitely has has turned because at yep. the beginning we were critical of OpenStack being kind of like you know back in my glory days and as a youth land manager, remember the whole, you know, everyone was going to jump in these standards bodies and it goes nowhere because it's just a marketing ploy or infighting. And then when Citrix dropped out, you saw an interesting shift, like in Nasira and the guys in the uh, SDN area, you got some heavy duty tech guys going in there looking at it as a playground and some good stuff came out. So the Nasira stuff was interesting. So, so you call it a Hail Mary against Amazon, but it looks like the past that got completed. Well, it became a developer environment. It really became kind of a playground to, to get some stuff out there, and, and you guys going in, that it makes, speaks, speaks volumes. My question is, is that if you look at what OpenStack's doing right now, it's becoming kind of this third option as a way to kind of get some independence. You got AWS out there, you got Rackspace, and all the Rackspace does play in OpenStack, um, but at AWS, the trend was, we want to put SSD in AWS, we have Netflix as kind of their showcase customer, and then recently the signal from NetApp to do storage in there is pretty interesting. So given those kind of market signals, HP has their own cloud. We have an amazing announcement from 3PAR team here at Storage Group. Um, <laughs> how do you cobble in the, good, the greatness well, and the awesomeness of some of those other products into your cloud? Well, I, I think at the end of the day, you have to, the, the HP storage announcement, which I agree, fantastic, um, is catering to a very specific demand in the market for enterprise uh, that we've seen. And uh, I think you're going to see HP always continue to deliver. That's part of the converged infrastructure portfolio, which we essentially coined three plus years ago. The entire industry's followed it. Similarly, we've taken Converge Cloud in a similar theme and said, we believe there's a certain way cloud technologies will be used and cloud solutions will come to manifest vis-a-vis -vis hybrid. Um, so our investment in OpenStack is in parallel to follow that. The storage piece follows what we're doing in converged infrastructure. For HP Cloud, we're using converged infrastructure to power the cloud, if you will. We're using HP software solutions. We've built our own with OpenStack. We've brought in you know, a healthy dose of sort of the enterprise services piece of it. So I think it's coming together to essentially help customers move from traditional IT models to now incorporating cloud models. I, I so think that's really, so it's really ultimately, it. the beautiful cloud was obviously buy as you go, rent versus buying kind of thing, economics were supposedly good, but really it's about on demand and utility based, like, 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 like electricity if you will. Um, how are you seeing the demand? Now that the on-prem has gotten more advanced with solid state, we see some innovation, like you said, three part caters to the audience. On-premise has been good. Public cloud, obviously is public cloud, but the hybrid really has emerged as a nice little gateway between the two. Not a lot of people were throwing their weight, their weight into the public cloud because of security and data issues. So this new ground, the hybrid was the focus. So how do you see that, those three things playing out? Obviously you're doing all three, right? So you're rolling out all three. Um, do you have any particular yeah, preference? So let's, let's make a point first. Our view on, on public cloud has been we're building an enterprise grade public cloud with service quality of an SLA, you know, a secure cloud, the notion of customer service to deal with the very notion of production workloads. The reason you haven't seen enterprises go full dev test to production is because of what you just mentioned. There, ha there has not been a you know, two data robust offering dealing with what enterprise requirements are. We think we've delivered the early innings on that. Uh, when you combine you know, the notion of cloud system and private cloud, We've been in that market for two plus years. Yeah. I think we've done a very admirable job there. But pulling this together is the notion of hybrid delivery. Customers have hybrid clouds, right? We don't have a hybrid cloud. HP doesn't have a hybrid cloud. We have hybrid delivery. Customers have hybrid environments, hybrid clouds they expect us to manage for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So our goal is to really line up public cloud. That's the connection. And it's private not a, cloud, right. Yeah, yeah. Basically make them interoperable in terms of service quality, in terms of moving workloads across the environments, on-premise to 
you know, your public cloud environment. And, and third, keeping it open yeah, and yeah. making sure our customers have choice because all the other vendors' solutions are largely fairly locked in. They walk you down a path, whether it's virtualization or it's another stack, but they ultimately walk you down a single stack. That's not yeah. been our Do you approach. see customers actually federating applications in that hybrid Absolutely. Model? I mean, one of our announcements today is you can now go with, uh, with our HP cloud workload migration service, you can literally take a Linux or Windows app and with our partner, push button deploy to the cloud, right? So you're now seeing a real world example of workloads being moving from an on-premise environment to a secure public cloud. Over time, we'll see other clouds get federated, but we need to see other clouds actually adopt the same level of SLA, the same hypervisor level of, sort of support, requirements. All that, all that hypervisor support. How, how, well, how about federating between uh, one of your customers' private clouds, which have the robustness, and, and your cloud? Uh, uh, do you expect that in the near or midterm? Yes, I think you'll, you'll actually see us being very active there. We just did um, our, our workload migration service, which can take any on-premise application, Linux, Windows, through three great partners, App Zero, uh, Clicker, and Gigaspaces, and I've implemented that as a service. We think that's going to be a massive solution for our customers. Yeah, okay, and, and so, are you, uh, am I correct though, you're not seeing that today? That's sort of a, a near term or a mid term, or are you actually seeing no, federated actually apps seeing today? That today. So we seeing announced that solution to no, deal with the solution, demand. But, but yeah. do, you, do you have customers actually federating apps in, in between their private cloud and, a, and, and your public cloud? Yes, we yeah, do. Yeah, okay, and what's the use case for that? Uh, so you can take, anything from, take dev test, you've got an application, you've, you've seen it in production, you now want to scale it. Um, you want to basically move it into a production environment, keep it running on the public cloud while you basically cloudify your on-premise environment, which was a traditional monolithic structure. So while you essentially, you can't afford to have that application go down, so have it run securely in the public cloud while you essentially refactor your on-premise okay. model into a cloud do, model. Do you agree that's rare? In, in the industry in terms of providers being able to do that and actually having customers doing that. You're, the, you're really the first, and I've been, I've been looking for months. I think, I think, I think you're the first that has said, yes, we're doing that today. And I've talked to probably 20 cloud service providers in the last two weeks and asked right. that very same question. The answer is consistently, we think it's coming. We're the first who has said yes. Why do you think that is? Well, I, I mean, HP's got some breadth and depth in terms of customers. Uh, like I said, a lot of the folks you've probably spoken to are coming at it from a lens of either it's a pure private cloud view or it's a pure public cloud view. When you couple the notion that says large enterprises want to adopt all the mobile stuff, all the web 2.0 cloud enabled social networking apps, mm -hmm. they want to take advantage of the bring your own device phenomena. There's a lot of new age web 2.0 distributed mobile apps that are looking to sort of you know, get deployed in what we call new cloud infrastructures. There's also traditional applications that essentially need to get moved on. We've responded to that need. I mean, our pipeline tells us there's a healthy need for that. I, That's why I we would love to the follow up with you on that and talk Absolutely. to some of your folks about it and learn more. That Happy would be great. Happy to do that. Appreciate it. So my final question is, we got we to wrap up here, is marketplace. Um, since we talked, a lot has changed for you uh, in terms of the scope of your the, uh, offering and the success. Uh, a lot's happening in the marketplace, specifically in the platform as a service and infrastructure as a service business. Um, and then yesterday, VMware, Cloud Foundry, sure. vFabric, yep. Greenplum, Cetus, and uh, Pivotal get popped out of VMware. Our spring source is in there too. Uh, Maritz is leading that charge. So you're seeing the maturation of an app environment, right? Yep. An app developer environment. And you know, my angle on that is obviously you have two DNAs at VMware, you have the, uh, the, the plumbers, the, the infrastructure guys doing the, 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 the uh, virtualization side, and then you had the developers floundering. Yeah. A little bit different opportunity, so I can see that. And I actually, I think it's a good move for them, but I want to get your take on it. Why well, are they I doing think, it? Sure. What's the dynamic? What's changed in the platform as a service market? What are some of the dyna key dynamics that are happening? Well, I'll defer to VMware and EMC to comment on why they think they're doing it. I my, my take on it is I think it validates our model in, in HP Cloud Services, which was we designed our cloud services to have infrastructure, true cloud, not virtualization to cloud, which isn't true cloud. True infrastructure is in a service with an integrated platform stack, so we're building platform as a service. We did it with Cloud Foundry. Uh, we've leveraged other models on it. We think what the future of that is, people want a secure place to build and run workloads and applications what the CIO wants. Then they in turn want tools that are modern, 
modern tools with you know, databases, service analytics, all of the sort of different language and frameworks. And they want that for their developers, whether it's a startup or an enterprise developer, along with their IT ops model, completely tied in and say, we're not giving you a set of tools, an environment, a management environment to manage all of your workloads. So to me, the EMC VMware announcement, I think is great uh, for the industry. I think it actually validates the fact that uh, they probably needed to focus more. And uh, from our standpoint, this is what we set out to do yeah. two years ago. True cloud, we love true cloud. This is true. a no cloud washing zone. Yeah, yeah, this is good. <laughs> no, I think it's awesome. I totally agree with you. HP Cloud Service is definitely a no cloud washing <laughs> zone. <laughs> we got some great sound bites on that last <laughs> segment. This is, to me, I totally agree with you. To me, what I'm most excited about, what you guys are doing, what that's happening with those guys is, it's good for their business and all the people involved. So, I mean, the spring yeah, source guys are jumping ship left focus. and right. You know, I mean, they're losing talents. There's all kinds of things going on there. But it's good for DevOps. It validates what I saw as a stall in DevOps. So, DevOps had this great momentum, kind of stalled a little bit. Big data sucked the oxygen out of the room with Hadoop and a lot of things going on there. But this absolutely, to me, legitimizes DevOps yes. as a bona fide category of market. Yes. And I think that is ultimately still early build out days, but the ability to move workloads seamlessly, mm -hmm. just at push of a button and it programmatically is the future. So um, congratulations, uh, Barry Singh with uh, HP, Senior Vice President, Converge Cloud and, and Cloud Services. So he's now in charge of all that greatness over there. Congratulations, the cloud wars begin. True cloud will be the definition that we will look Love at. It. And, uh, mm -hmm. We love it here at HP Discover, extracting all the signal from the noise. This is SiliconANGLE, theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.